coronavirus pandemic no doubt had its effect on every sector with the education industry having its fair share. The Presidential Tax Force Directive on Exit Classes Resumption on the 4th of August to commence revision classes is being complied with to an appreciable level. Stakeholders in the education sector are implementing the agreed protocols to ensure the safety of students and teachers. With barely two weeks to the commencement of WIAC examination, how prepared are the students who are the worst hit and how can the gap be bridged? What measures should relevant authorities put within this short period of time to ensure that the outcome of preparations is with is worth the while? These and more critical issues will receive attention on Panorama reaching you live from the Port Harcourt Network Center. I am Jenny Passy. Well, we are starting on a sad note here from Lagos. Evacuation of a tanker fully loaded with 55,000 liters of petrol involved in an accident by Signals Barracks in Mautu, Lagos is underway. One of the emergency responders from the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, LASMA, said the accident occurred when the tanker rammed into a pothole and fell sideways, resulting in the content spilling on the road. The driver and his assistant were alleged to have immediately fled the scene. An unidentified woman lost her life in the process. Uh, we noticed that um, two trucks, the first one is the container, had an accident. I mean, I don't know what happened. Charlie had an accident too. What about this man? The first truck had an accident, maybe lost control or whatever. So they, they picked that one. And the second one is the tanker. I think they had. That truck I wanted to turn. So the see now it's like the, the road is bad, so tank has to fall down so The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, will withdraw from the conduct of a dual government election if the threat of violence escalates and candidates unduly influence the electorates. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu stated this in an interview with newsmen in Nasarawa State. Whatever we need to do to stem the uh, ugly reports of violence so far, or threats of it, um, particularly in Edo State, will do so. We'll continue to speak to the actors. The assurance has been consistent with the assurance that we have always given. We are not a political party. We have no candidates in the election. We will jealously guard our processes. But as I said, and I keep repeating myself, Anybody who thinks that he can influence the people's choice on election day through violence is wasting his time. If there is violence, we'll simply withdraw and we'll see who will declare winner in that manner. The 17 lawmakers of the Doe State House Assembly, including the 14 members whose seats were earlier declared vacant, have impeached the Speaker of the Assembly, Frank Okie, and Deputy Speaker, Roland Asoro, Ogo Chukuka, on our report that this was after the inauguration of the 14 members at an emergency plenary at a private location in Benin. Victor Edoro was sworn in as the new Speaker of the House. The impeachment notice was signed by the 17 members present at the location. This was after Emmanuel Agbaje, representing Akoko Edo 2 constituency, was nominated as Speaker Pro Tem. We, the other members of 
Edo State House of Assembly, the other move for the impeachment of the Speaker, Right Honorable Frank Okie, and Deputy Speaker, Right Honorable Roland Awe Asoro, representing ASA Northeast 1 and Orion 2 constituencies, respectively. For gross misconduct, high-handedness, and continued breach of the relevant sections of the House rules and the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Victor Edora, representing Essen Central, took the oath of office and allegiance presided over by the Deputy Clerk of the House, Samuel Fezokai. This development follows a motion moved by Washington Osifu, representing the Wonde constituency, and seconded by Kinsley Agabi, representing Esako East constituency. Emmanuel Agbaje, representing Akukwedo to constituency, was nominated as Deputy Speaker in a motion moved by Chris Okaigbe, representing Oredo West, and seconded by Michael Ohio Ezomo, representing our one West constituency. In his acceptance speech, the speaker, Victor Edoro, appreciated the people of Edo for their support since the struggle after the election in 2019, especially the APC, Adam Soshomale, and the federal government. He wants all to be united in moving the state forward. He says the House is not keen on impeachment of any member of the executive. I want to also congratulate the Executive Governor of Edo States, Mr. Godwin Norazel Opaseki. We have resolved to give him the necessary cooperation insofar as the two states will move forward. Sitting has been adjourned till 7th August. 24 members of the House were elected last year, but only nine members were inaugurated on July 17. The latest development in the state legislature follows the declaration of support for the APC candidate Pastor Sage Zeyamu by four members of the Assembly, including the Deputy Speaker Yekini Daye. He was, however, impeached Wednesday and replaced by Roland Asoro. In Benin, Ogochkuka Ona, NTA News. Northern Governor's Forum has condemned the recent attack in Southern Kaduna, in which about 22 persons were reportedly killed on Wednesday night. As yet to be arrested, gunmen attacked four Yatav villages in Zango Katav, local government area of Kaduna State. In a statement, the chairman of the Forum and governor of Plateau State, Simon Bakola Long, said the persistent attacks on villages in the area despite all efforts by the Kaduna State Government and security agencies to end the violence raises serious concern and condemnation. The Long said this recent attack where the at Yap villages were affected shows the desperate attempt by criminal elements to not only cause pain and sorrow among innocent citizens, but also frustrate the effort of the Kaduna state government at fostering peace. Governor Lalong also said that the Northern Governor's Forum maintains its position that any group or individual that is aggrieved should seek redress through official channels rather than resort to self-help. The Northern Governors Forum commiserated the victims of the crisis and the government of Kaduna State, pledging its support to Governor Nasser El Rafai as he works with all stakeholders to bring the incident crisis to an end. <laughs> And now to COVID-19 update. On the 6th of August 2020, 354 new confirmed cases of COVID-19 were recorded in Nigeria. Until date, 45,244 cases have been confirmed, 32,430 cases discharged, and 930 deaths recorded. The 457 new cases are reported from 17 states, and there are Lagos, FCT 78, Lagos 76, Kaduna 23, Eboyi 19, Oyo 18, Nasaro and Rivers 17 cases each, Delta 16, Quara 15, Aquaibum 13, Edo and Ogun 12 cases, Plateau 11, Kano 9, while Bauchi, Borno and Ekiti 
have six cases each. The federal government has retained the current phase two of the seas each lockdown for another four weeks with slight modifications of the existing guidelines. Chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, Boss Mustafa, says this follows President Buhari's approval of the state's interim report and recommendations of the task force. Bitaire Ibn reports. Although the second phase of the East lockdown suffered non-compliance and poor enforcement of PTF guidelines in the states, the task force modified the existing guidelines with considerations for movement, industry and labor, as well as community activities. The modifications include granting permission to civil servants from grade level 12 and above to resume full working hours Mondays to Fridays, permission to exiting classes to resume ahead of examinations, approval to the Ministry of Aviation to prepare for reopening of international flights in a matter of weeks, and reopening of recreation parks only for supervised physical exercise and not for social gatherings. The retained restrictions include the nationwide curfew from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., bars, cinemas, and nightclubs to remain closed, continued ban on mass gatherings while daycare and primary schools are to remain closed except for pupils taking exams in line with established guidelines and protocols. We have made recommendations to the aviation industry to commence the process for opening international airports provided all existing international and local prevention guidelines on COVID-19 are in place. We encourage work at home policy for civil slash public servants below the grade level of 12. However, while primary schools must remain closed, registered pupils may proceed to take the national common entrance as soon as it is feasible provided there is compliance with issued non-pharmaceutical guidelines. For secondary and tertiary institutions, just to clarify, these remain closed. However, we have made arrangements for exiting or graduating students in their final years of secondary school to resume and partake in exams in line with guidelines issued by the Federal Ministry of Education. Restriction is removed on outdoor communal non-contact sports and the use of recreational parks for supervised physical exercise, not for social interactions, but supervised physical exercise. The Presidential Task Force reached the conclusion that for Nigeria, it is important to ensure that restrictions are not completely relaxed in order to control and abate further community transmission. As restrictions are being gradually eased, the PTF, however, warns that skepticism about COVID-19 could further complicate the pandemic. Hence, state governments and communities are urged to own the response and educate citizens. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikwen, NTA News. Academic activities across public and private schools in River State have commenced with strict enforcement of the COVID-19 prevention protocols by the school authorities. Kingsley Amadure reports that key priority among the students is the need for the school authorities to maximize the revision period to cover perceived lost grounds. Since the reopening of schools, we have been monitoring activities at different schools in River State. This time around, we visited Community Secondary School, ALO, in Equal Local Government Area and Government Secondary School, Emoha, in Emoha Local Government Area. Joy and David are among thousands of students who have been at home for the past four months waiting to sit for their exit examination. We are trying very hard to prepare for this exam, and our teachers are trying very hard also. Well, I was there too. I was doing e learning and other. We had e-learning and we've also read our books. They gave us assignment day online. We did it. I can say that I'm just like 70% prepared for the exam. A key issue of concern to stakeholders in the sector is the need to ensure adherence to the COVID-19 protocols on the part of the students and their teachers. 
my visit to a number of schools reveals uh, different levels of compliance. But on the whole, we're happy that generally speaking, uh, there is a good level of compliance uh, you know, within the schools. Across the schools visited, the consciousness to adhere to the COVID-19 protocols is high, but the supporting environment differs from school to school. Some uh, chairs have been given to the school, and uh, we are expecting, uh, we are still expecting uh, more from the government. And the problem we are having here is leakages in all the classrooms. Even the exam hall is also leaking. The classroom that is there to sit, and the, the seat, they will sit for the exam. That's the, the major problem. You can see the, the place is okay. We have the buckets, we have the sanitizers. We are also complying with the government, the social distancing. The whole school is empty, so we are going to make use of all the classrooms. At the Federal Government College, Port Harcourt, beside the renovation of the physical structures and clear demarcation of the classrooms, there is also an isolation center in the event of any emergency. And Port Harcourt, Kingsley, Amajiri, NTA News. Public and private schools resume on August 4th after over three months of being shut down due to coronavirus pandemic. And the reopening of schools for exit classes government believe will enable students prepare for the WIAC examination schedule to commence on August 17, 2020. In view of this, what measures have been put in place by schools authorities to ensure that the environment will be safe for students? And with me in the studio to discuss on that is Mr. Emma Nweke. Mr. Emma Nweke is a lecturer with Captain Elechi Amadi Polytechnic. It's my pleasure to have you on Panorama, sir. Thank you very much. Of course, you know that the world has gone digital. Now, how are our teachers um, prepared for this, given the fact that um, now students have to use um, a data ICT? Uh, well, the matter there is that our, the teachers uh, as it were, so most of them are what we call uh, digital immigrants. Most of them are finding the digital era strange. And then it behooves on their employers to quickly train them and fix them up for the job, hackling task as it were. But we find an emergency approach to the whole scenario. And so you cannot expect that these uh, teachers will be in their optimum performance. Uh, like I've also said, Nigerians should also do comparative education. we we'll find out what is happening in other countries. Like in South Africa, what you find is that uh, teachers are given about 150 gigabyte data monthly, as well as the students. So they are not just uh, uh, trained on how to use the digital tools, they are also equipped to use them. Okay, let's look at measures government have put in place to ensure that um, our students are safe. Now, when comparing to those in the hinterlands, I, I do not think so much has been done. You know, the uh, COVID-19 preparations, to my mind, has been very elitist. The persons, the students and teachers in the hinterland, in the rural areas, I don't think so much has been done. Uh, uh, recent visits to some of these places, you will find that uh, some of the schools are still overgrown with grasses, a very poor sanitation situation, and the children do not have access to these internet facilities, uh, telecom facilities. They, they are, I know, uh, not within reach. And government has not also made a, a frantic effort to make sure that these persons are reached. So we should do a, 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 you know, a, adopt a general approach that will be uh, have an inclusive reach to those children or students or teachers in the hinterland. Now, um, power has been a major challenge in this part of the country. How impactful was e-learning during the lockdown period? A power shortage is a, a plague. In, uh, we have imposed on ourselves. We have refused to give ourselves power as a country. And so you cannot begin to talk about e-learning and then make sure, uh, thinking that it will go far when there are no infrastructures in place. The, infra the power infrastructure is not there and there is nothing visible to show that very soon we are going to have uh, power. So you will usually have hitches for the children or students to learn seamlessly. So the power 
uh, infrastructure and all other infrastructure required for the education to go online, v -learning, remote learning, must be put in place immediately. Okay, now let's look at um, the curricula of these students. Are they being covered? Has it been covered? If not, how are students going to, to, to um, prepare for this examination? And the marking scheme, how is it going to look like? There is no way um, the curriculum would have been covered. If you say the children that in the urban areas may have covered or some bits also a near a percentage of coverage, those in the hinterlands in the rural areas, there's no way they would have covered the curriculum. So what I think right now is that Nigeria should adopt the Guyanian approach. Uh, now the students are back to the terrestrial forum, they are back to physical learning. They should ensure that the teachers are paid extra money to motivate them to teach the children in the extra hours to make sure that they are able to at least get some more uh, percentage coverage of the uh, uh, curriculum. If not, there is going likely to be massive failure. The children, if they are very serious with education, they should not just uh, drop the e-learning, they should uh, merge the e-learning with the physical learning so that as the, children, as the child goes back home, he continues with the e-learning platform if the facilities are provided there. I have said that there is no reason why Nigerian employers should not give, especially the public schools, should not give the teachers laptops and teach them immediately how to use it. The children that do not have laptops should also be given one so that there should not be any reason why they cannot follow and then make sure that the curriculum is covered before the uh, WIAC timeline. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ma. Do you have any parting word for the people? The, what we have to say is that Nigerians and the East leaders should stop taking education for granted. They should begin to respect the teachers and accord them the necessary motivation. Then the students and the student work, like we have said, UNESCO report, over 1.725 billion students across the globe have been impacted negatively in education as a result of the COVID-19. So many countries have developed the most approaches to make sure that these learning gaps are breached. Nigeria should develop immediately the most approach to make sure that every child that is supposed to be educated gets the education required. Thank you very much, you. Mr. Emma Nweke. That was Mr. Emma Nweke, a lecturer with Captain Elechi Amadi Polytechnic here in River State. We will now pause for a break. Panorama continues shortly. For now, the best and most efficient way to avoid getting infected is through regular hygienic and sanitary practices as well as social distancing. As individuals, we remain the greatest weapon to fight this pandemic. By washing our hands regularly with clean water and soap, disinfecting frequently used surfaces and areas, coughing into a tissue or elbow, and strictly adhering to infection prevention control measures in health facilities, we can contain this virus. Coronavirus is real. Steps to avoid this pandemic. Wash your hands regularly or sanitize your hands. Keep social and physical distancing. Avoid crowded places. Stay at home unless absolutely necessary. Don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth if your hands are not clean. Avoid the spread of coronavirus. Coronavirus is real. Welcome. As sports is next to Ayo Deji Makindi. Former head coach of Nigeria's Super Eagles, Joe Bonfrey, has described the national team as a brand that must be guarded with every sense of jealousy. 
the Dutch tactician who guided Nigeria to Atlanta 1996 Olympics gold, charges stakeholders on team work in order to harness the nation's football prowess. With increasing number of young and athletic Nigerian players who are doing well in European clubs, the Nigerian national football can become very strong again and win trophies like before. Meanwhile, action returns in the UEFA Champions League with the remaining round of 16 second leg fixtures set to be decided. On Friday, Serie A champions Juventus welcome Leon to Allianz Stadium while Real Madrid play Manchester City at the Etihad. And on Saturday, Chelsea will be in Germany for their clash against Bundesliga champions Bayern Munich while Napoli visits Barcelona at the new camp in Spain. Arrangements are in top gear for a successful staging of Made in Northern Nigeria Local Government Games 2020. Organizers who are working in conjunction with the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development say the project will be up and running post-COVID-19. We'll scout them and some train them, send some of them abroad, and within a couple of years, we believe we will now be having stretchers, pillars, stars, from the north in sports. Kano State is expected to host the maiden edition of the Games. In Abuja, Ayodeji, Makinde, NTA News. Panorama on Port Harcourt Network Center. We thank you for watching. Bye-bye.